Now, next is QFP. So the net generalization <coughs> from here is quantum field theory. And what you do here, you have fields, let us say, and, and their corresponding momentas, phi x mu and e mu or let me call it phi mu to also x mu and let me also be a columns. So these are the canonical momenta. Okay. So what you have? You have the scalar fields, complex or real as you like. You have electromagnetic field or the vector field and you have the spinner field. So your conventional field theory talks about about them and the corresponding canonical momentas. Here, notice one particular change. Here, they were functions of time unknown. So, it is zero space, one time dimensional field theory uh, or quantum mechanics or classical mechanics. Okay, so if you consider classical mechanics, you consider classical field theory, then you consider next generalization is classical string field theory. That is what we are going to do. Okay, and if you quantize this here, you get quantum mechanics, you get quantum field theory, you get quantum string field theory. Very simple. Okay, so what is the next generalization that is involved here? Here, I would have some string coordinates, sigma alpha, sigma alpha. Okay, here, uh, alpha is uh, 0 and k. So, my x mu x mu which are called as the string coordinates and the corresponding canonical momenta for the coordinates. So, they are scalar fields actually. The so called string coordinates or coordinate fields they are scalar quantities uh, as you will see, perhaps you have massless scalar fields. So, if you do not have any mass term for the in the scalar field theory, you have massless scalar field, but we can see what we do. So, they are analogous to the scalar fields, but of course, we can also introduce. Uh, so, here everything would be a function of sigma alpha, sigma alpha, and of course, their moment Okay. So, uh, and, and you can you can also introduce electromagnetic field if you like, okay, all the fields. So, now here this index mu will take value 0, 1 and i or it will take value plus, minus and i where i would take value 2, 3, 25 for the bosonic strings and it will take value 2, 3, up to 9 for uh, super Okay. So, this has to do with the dimensions of the theory. So, that means with, with this definition, I can have uh, D0 brain, this could be described by x mu function of tau. and sigma sigma p. So, the zero brain is just a point particle. D0 brain is just a point particle, D1 brain is your string with where x mu is a function of tau and sigma. Then this is a membrane, D2 brain is a membrane function of tau sigma 1 sigma 2 and DP brain. So these are higher dimensional 
brains. Okay, we will go and talk about these things again and again with respect to the different boundary conditions, the region and uh, one normal boundary conditions. Okay, then these ideas would be revised again and again here. So this sigma alpha, so this alpha takes values also zero and one, or let me go to j and or plus and minus and j so uh, i have simultaneously introduced that this would be the so called instant form quantization and this would be the so called light front quantization or light cone quantization here you combine two of the indices into plus and minus we will again and again i take up the things to my mind which i think if they are basic things i repeat them okay so we and i i try to keep my course self contained so you really don't need to depend on something extra i give my own uh, prerequisites in my own course so here so for so for the d0 brain this alpha would take only value 0 and sigma 0 is tau sigma 0 is tau sigma 1 is sigma sigma 2 is sigma okay or sigma bar or in the string theory you just call it up to this then you have uh, sigma 2 and so on okay if you have higher dimensional brain we would not always talk about about higher dimensional brains we will just concentrate on up to d1 brains okay so which is proper string theory all right so and this also we will appropriately i will remind you but I wanted to tell you this goal, this we need to understand very carefully. How do we go from classical mechanics to classical field theory by generalizing this concept to this? Okay. These fields <coughs> depend on this x mu, which is the Minkowski space. And here, then this is further generalized to the string coordinates. But here, not only you have these string coordinates, you again can have electromagnetic field, but then so what would happen is uh, that the electromagnetic field within the string theory a mu given by this would also be like that this would also be a function of sigma alpha and the string field psi would also be a function of sigma alpha so all the fields in string theory they are going to be a function of sigma alpha okay in my notation you can have but you will understand whichever book you read. So here, and therefore, we would, I would, I would consider everywhere in all the all my calculations. I would first consider d zero brains properly, which is the relativistic point particle, and that is what we would try to understand all the way up to the super strings. Then it will be a super particle. We would not. I would not take it up right now. But first, we will do. Uh, D0 brain and then we go to D1 brain and do lots of details with the string theory. Then we talk about super strings and at that point of time we will again come back to the super particle. Okay. So uh, I think I can erase these things. All right. This is fine. Very good. I think with this particular concept, we are really now ready to dive into the string theory, uh, some more details and <coughs> yes, so the very first thing that we, that we, we try to understand, so we are still back to d0 brain action and always we would have two types of actions one action would involve a square root in its definition they are called Nambu-Goto type of actions and another kind of actions would not involve any square roots so they would be polyagot type actions and everywhere for d0 brain d1 brain d2 brain dp brains in general that is true in general okay so we would and we will try to see the advantages and so on of various approaches all right <coughs> so for this let me just take 
non-relativistic point particle, and I can construct uh, L non-relativistic to be P minus V and BT, and this is my one half m x dot square, and if I consider a free particle, then I take this to be zero and dt. And if you write down the Euler Lagrange equation, uh, del L over del x minus d y dt of I'm I'm making it simple, okay? Otherwise, you could go through little more rigorously mathematical using variational principle everywhere, but we will do it at little bit later, okay? We just go fast. So, uh, this would be this is 0. So, this is minus dy dt of 1 half m into twice into x dot. So, this tells me that this is equal to 0 and this tells me that x dt dot is equal to a constant. So, this is velocity equal to constant and this is a catch. Now, nothing tells me the upper bound on V. That's my catch, that there is nothing that I have which can help me put an upper bound on V. So, V could be anything. It could even be greater than the speed of light. And therefore, this is all right for non-relativistic description, but for relativistic description, it does not help me. So, what I do is, uh, I try to take, uh, let me better remove this and we 